every winter, I used to get loads of shocks from static electricity. Why did it happen and how did I stop them? There are still lots of things that we don't understand about static electricity. And that's partly because there are at least four different ways that it happens, but also because it sits right in that fuzzy no man's land between chemistry and physics. Let's start by talking about electrical charge. It's carried either by electrons, which are negative, or by ions, which can be negative or positive. And charges can also form when molecules break their bonds to form smaller pieces. Now, materials usually have a balance of positive and negative charges, and very simply, that means no electricity. But somehow, friction between two materials can create an imbalance in those charges. And that imbalance creates an electric field, that electric field makes the charges move, and that's electricity. Great, done, let's have an ice cream. But hang on, how does friction cause this charge imbalance? Well, the simple explanations will tell you that the materials have to be different. And in fact, you can get lists of materials that will tell you which materials will give electrons to which other materials. So you can use those to predict what charge a surface will get. But there are two problems. First of all, this list suggests that two pieces of the same material rubbed together won't generate static electricity. But they do. Secondly, you can get these triboelectric series which go round in a circle, like scissors, paper, stone. And that isn't supposed to happen. This means that there must be different mechanisms of generating static electricity. So let's have a look at the big four. In electron transfer, one of the materials has a better environment for the electrons, so they just jump and form a spark. But usually that's only significant if at least one of the materials is a metal. Some materials have mobile ions on their surface. And if they just move to the other surface while they're being rubbed together, you get a charge separation. This is great when you do have mobile ions, but obviously doesn't work if you don't. At about 30% relative humidity, surfaces will have a super thin, molecule thick layer of water. And some of that water will break up into hydronium and hydroxide ions. But it's the hydroxide ions that really stick to that surface. So when we pull our two materials apart, the hydroxide ions will be left behind and that creates our charge imbalance. When we rub two materials together, we can break individual molecules and breaking those bonds leaves behind opposite charges. And if molecules with the same charges tend to stick together, for example, because of their shape or their structure, we can end up with areas of high charge density being left behind. Now, the same surface can actually have areas of positive charge and negative charge. But any random imbalance between the total areas of these charges will leave a final net charge on the whole material. So when we put all of this together, we find that for different reasons, materials rubbed together can cause big sparks, but they don't have to be different materials. Oh, and before I forget, if you're enjoying the video, why not click the like button? Thanks. But why is static electricity so much more of a problem in winter? Well, it's not really about winter, it's about humidity. Warm rooms in winter tend to have a very low humidity, maybe somewhere around 30%. Now, 30% is great for forming that monolayer we were talking about before. But if we have a higher humidity, 
two things happen. Firstly, water vapor reduces the strength of electric fields between surfaces. So that makes the sparks harder to occur. But secondly, a higher humidity will increase the thickness of that water layer. Any ions that are floating around in the air just from the general dust can dissolve and go and meet their opposite charges and neutralize them. So, how can we prevent static shocks then? Well, if you're working with sensitive equipment, an anti-static wristband is essential. But that's impractical for daily life, of course. If you're getting the shocks in a specific room, you might be able to solve the problem using a humidifier. If you can identify a material friction problem, then try and change at least one of the materials involved. Common problems are between clothes and seats or shoes and carpets. If none of these solutions work for you, this trick always works. Just touch any piece of metal with your knuckle first. It's not as sensitive as your fingers and you won't feel the shock. There is one last point and it's very important. If you're getting regular electric shocks from a particular piece of electrical equipment and not just general bits of metal, make sure it is earthed properly. And if you don't know how to do that, check with somebody who does. So how about you? Have you got some stories about getting static electric shocks? Or maybe you've got a special trick to stop them happening at all? Check out the links in the description if you want to do some reading by yourself. And if you like hearing about how stuff works, then why not check out my video on what fire is? See you next time.